Hallelujah. So greater is he that is within Sarah. Greater is he that's within Joy and George and Ruth and Lucy and Grace and Gwen. Greater is he that's within uh, Freddie and myself. Hallelujah. So that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it uh, because we're so smart, are so brilliant, are so beautiful, are we have everything together. No, we do it because he helps us to do it. Praise the Lord. So I am talking about pulling down strongholds, anything that hinders you from going forward into your purpose, into your destiny, that is a stronghold. And so we want those to be gone. And I'm going to deal with those three, fear, condemnation and guilt, and sickness and disease. There's many others out there that the enemy tries to bring uh, to an individual. And so we're going to talk about those. Let's go to 1 John. Um, well, we're already in chapter 4. Let's go over to 18. And it says, there is no fear in love. Do you know how much the Lord loves you? Have you experienced that love? Have you, do you have a, um, a truth about his love? Uh, do you know exactly how much he loves you? Because the, the amount of knowing will help you to overcome any fear that the enemy tries to put on you. Uh, and so let's read on. There is no fear in love, but perfect love, perfect love, God is love, casteth out fear because fear hath torment. And I don't know about you, but as a small child, I used to have nightmares and I would dream of, of beast and, and evil uh, that was coming at me and and I would cry out in the night and, and um, this was very um, upsetting to my parents. It was very upsetting to, to me uh, as, a, as a child uh, that I would have these images and that I would have these nightmares. But once I became a Christian, those nightmares went away. Those images went away because God's love came into me. And I knew how much he loved me because I was into a lot of things that were not good for a small child to be into. But I knew that he had taken all those things away from me. And I knew that, that he loved me and that he was going to protect me and that he was going to help me overcome any evil that came. You know, where does fear come from? Where is the root of any fear? Somebody tell me, what is the root of fear? Think about it. Because we must come, we must deal with the roots. So Self-centered, I think. Okay, being self-centered. Um, thinking about yourself. Pardon? I said the condemnation. Well, that's certainly uh, one of the strongholds that the enemy tries to bring. Um, but the root root of all fear is not knowing the love of God. Because the love of God will cast out the fear. If you know how much he loves you and you receive that love, then the fear has to go. Hallelujah. Remember, I want you to remember, I want you this to stick into your gut. I want you to, this, to, this scripture in 1 John 4, 4, where it says that you have overcome because greater is he that is within you, that's within me, that's within all of us, is the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a fear, there's an... Um, Fear also that root uh, is that you don't know 
what's going to happen. That not knowing uh, causes fear to come in, in some people. And that stops everything. Fear will stop your faith from working. It will stop you from going forward it, and, and, and ministering to other people. It will stop everything. And so that, that's why I'm starting there, fear. Now, let's go to 2 Timothy 1.7. And we're familiar with this scripture. It says that he has not given us a spirit of fear. He has not given uh, Ruth a spirit of fear or Lucy a spirit of fear or Grace a spirit of fear or any of us. God is love. And God does not have, he can't give what he doesn't have. God can't give sickness and disease because he doesn't have it. God doesn't have fear because he doesn't have it. He can only give what he has. And he has love for us. Hallelujah. His love is so great and so mighty. Hallelujah. That it makes us overcomers. And it says that he has not given us a spirit of fear. But let's look at these next three things. And I'm breaking this down. I'm doing some teaching tonight. Hallelujah. What has he given us? He has given us a spirit of power. He's given us his Holy Spirit. He's given us a spirit of love. And he's given us a spirit of a sound mind. Hallelujah. That, you know, there's many people out there that would try to, uh, to put things in our minds about Possibly things like unworthiness, things like uh, you're not competent enough, uh, you you can't do this, uh, you're not able to do this, you're not able to, to take this class or learn this material, uh, you're not able to go and live by yourself, you're not able to do this. All of that is doubt and unbelief. All of those thoughts, but it says here that God has given us his mind, a sound mind. Hallelujah. I have a sound mind because God has given it to me. Why? Because he loves me so much. He loves you so much that he wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. And that's third John. Praise the name of Jesus. So fear. Fear has to be cast out by the father himself. And, and so we just say, Lord, I know you love me so much that this fear has to go in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Now we're going to talk about some other strategic weapons that we can use, but knowing the love of God is, is one of those weapons. I know how much he loves me. And that helps me. When fear comes to me, our anxiety comes to me, our depression comes to me. Hallelujah. 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 So the second stronghold is guilt and condemnation. Let's go to Romans chapter eight. Familiar to all of us. If you hear lightning and thunder and rain in the background, that's because we're having a big storm uh, here in Athens. So I pray that that all goes well with this recording uh, tonight. Romans chapter eight, verse one says, "There is therefore now when tomorrow, six months from now, uh, when you get stronger in your faith. No, it says right now, right now. Hallelujah." There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And every one of us watching and, and participating tonight, we are born again. We love the Lord. We're in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's talking to all of us who walk not after the flesh. Now that's important. But after the spirit, we want spiritual things. 
You know, you can tell a carnal person from a spiritual person by number one, what do they talk about most of the time? Where do they go most of the time? What are they doing most of the time? So a carnal person is, is of the world. They have worldly desires. They have worldly thoughts. But a spiritual person has thoughts of prayer, thoughts about the word of God, desiring to be with the Lord, desiring to be in gatherings like this one tonight. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to have all of you with us tonight. Yes, amen. It's wonderful. For the law of the spirit of life, that's what you have, in Christ Jesus hath made me free. Hallelujah, I'm free. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, if my body lays down tonight, it says that I do not die. My body may lay down, but my spirit and my soul will be in the presence of Almighty God. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And Jesus said, because I live, you will live. Hallelujah. And you will not die. Your body may lay down. And they may lay you in the grave and wrap you up like a little mummy. But praise the name of Jesus. You're not dead. So, even, you know, that's why Paul said, if I go to be with Jesus, that's okay with me. That's good. But he says, it's, it's better if I stay here and, and be with all of you. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, there are days when I say, oh, Lord, you know, you know, I, you know, it's, it would be great to just come on and, and be with you. But, but then I would miss seeing Sarah's face and Ruth's face and, and George and Joy. And, and I would, I would miss, you know, brother Fred. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For Father's Day, I'm going to kill him a beaver. And I'm going to make him a little hat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I am a mountain woman. Praise the name of Jesus. No, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Maybe a squirrel hat. Maybe a squirrel. We have lots of squirrels out there. So, that I'm still on the, the guilt and condemnation, bringing down that stronghold, bringing down any, anything that the enemy tries to, to bring you. Because see, guilt and condemnation, the root of it is the past. What happened in the past? What happened yesterday? What happened, uh, you know, back two years ago? That is, that's where the guilt and the condemnation can, can just kind of creep in and creep in and creep in and creep in until it overtakes an individual. It overtakes their thoughts. It overtakes their body. And they just, they just get deeper and deeper into a, to a pit. I've been there. But the, but the Lord says, no, you don't have to because of the cross. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have no guilt. We have no condemnation because all of that has passed away. And behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. And I love that next verse after that. It says that, and I, is that in Second um, Corinthians yeah. uh, 5 or 17 and 18? I think verse 18 is what it says, and all things are of God. Hallelujah. You don't have anything left that's, uh, that belongs to grace. You don't have anything left that belongs to Gwen. You don't have anything left that belongs to George because George is dead. George is dead, but alive in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So he doesn't have to be condemned by the by the enemy he doesn't have to put up with that he doesn't have to put up with any type of condemnation he doesn't have to put up with any fear praise the name of jesus because of the cross Hallelujah. 
because of the cross. Hallelujah. But we have to know what he did on the cross. You know, when we take communion and we take communion every day, when we do that, we say, Lord, we remember that your body was wounded for us. Hallelujah. And broken for us. And we remember what you did uh, through your blood, that your blood cleanses us and delivers us and heals us. We tell him, we remember you today. Yes, Hallelujah. And so knowing what Jesus did on the cross will help you to be an overcomer where guilt and condemnation are concerned. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, John chapter five. I'm still on guilt and condemnation. Lord, we praise you tonight. We praise you. We give you glory tonight. Hallelujah. We open up our, our hearts to you tonight. We enter into your, your presence with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Hallelujah. And into your holy of holies with worship, Lord. We worship you tonight for who you are and what you are inside of us, Lord. Hallelujah. That we don't have to fear anymore. We don't have to feel guilty anymore. Hallelujah. In John chapter 5, verse 24. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on me that and on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have Jesus' life. You have abundant life. Hallelujah. There's no lack. There's no lack in your life. There's no lack of love. There's no lack of, of um, wisdom. There's no lack of finances. There's no lack of, of physical love or spiritual love. There's no lack in your life. Hallelujah. That's what, what, that's what having his life is all about. No lack. Nothing lacking nothing missing you know there there you know there were times when i would feel like you know i didn't have um what it took to do the job that i needed to do as a as a wife as a mother as an educator even as a minister and there are times when when the enemy will bring that to you. And if you accept it, listen to this word right here, because this is straight from the Holy Spirit. If you accept what the enemy brings to you, whether it's fear, guilt, condemnation, sickness, disease, anxiety, depression, it will become a stronghold in your life. And it will hold you back. It will hold you back. And I want to flow with the Holy Ghost. Yes, amen. I want to go up, 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 you know, to, to the top of the mountain with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the third one. And then we're going to talk about a few other things before we're finished today. And this is sickness and disease. Now, we need to put the axe to the root of any sickness and disease. And by disease, I mean something that is long-term. Uh, I mean, Lucy probably could give a better definition of, of, what, of what disease is. But what I, what I know of it is that a sickness can be uh, just there for a short period of time, but a disease is something that infiltrates your blood, infiltrates your body, the cells of your body, and it lasts longer. Some of the the reasons uh, are the, the roots of sickness and disease can be demonic forces. It can be evil. Uh, but what the Lord showed me today, I saw things that were external out here in the environment that can cause sickness and disease. And then I also in, I saw internal. I saw things like anger and unforgiveness and bitterness, and those things that uh, are internal. 
So sickness and disease, the root of those things are either external and even stress is external. Worry is external. Uh, doubt and unbelief is, is out here in the, in the world. Uh, and all these, the, the things that we hear uh, from, you know, listening to different things, you know, external. <clears throat> and then those things that are, that are internal forces, you know, and, and pride is another one that is an, an internal. Uh, so we, we talked about bitterness. We talked about unforgiveness. We talked about anger. Uh, we talked about, uh, and another one is pride. And all of those internal forces can create an atmosphere, if you will, for the enemy to come in and bring sickness and disease to our bodies. You know, our bodies, like I was saying um, with Grace, I'm so glad that she's going into some courses about nutrition uh, because nutrition is so, research has shown uh, Grace, and, and I'm sure you will study all about this, but nutrition and, and stress-related uh, situations are, are um, coordinated, are, they're, they're connected. Poor, they're, poor nutrition. Poor, poor, poor nutrition and, and, and how the body responds and reacts uh, is is all uh, inter interconnected, and and so you know when I was teaching uh, my in my natural business, my consultant business, I did a course that I taught. It was a six hour course on stress, mm -hmm. and one thing, and I always I did um, um, interviews with doctors. I did uh, interviews in different um, facilities. Um, and in prisons and in jails. And one thing that I found out that they did a study with prisoners and they, they had uh, a control group uh, that they fed nutritious um, foods and, and they were on a very strict diet. And, um, and then uh, there was another group that was the, the free group or the, the uh, uninhibited uh, group and they could eat anything they wanted to. If they wanted to eat uh, three hot dogs, you know, in the day, you know, they could eat three hot dogs. If they wanted bologna sandwich, they could have a bologna sandwich. They could eat anything, you know, they want. They could eat as many sweets as they wanted. And so uh, that they found out after the, the, the test was over with or after the, the study was over with that those that uh, were fed nutritious food and were on uh, strict diets, their behavior became much more satisfactory. Their behavior changed. The way they thought about things changed. The way they reacted and responded uh, to things uh, changed. But the group that was on the free diet that could eat whatever they wanted to eat they their behavior became more um, serious. Their behavior became they became more angry. They became uh, more uh, aggressive, uh, more violent. And so, you know, the, what we what we put into our bodies is so very important. And uh, and I know the Lord's been speaking to me about some of those things. All right, I'm talking about strategic warfare to bring down fear, condemnation, guilt, sickness, disease. And number one is that we need a prayer life. We need to have communication with the Father because the Father knows exactly what we need to do. When we don't know what to do, the Lord knows what to do. So we need a prayer life. We also need uh, to, to do our fasting so that we put aside any fleshly desires or any carnality and we just enter in uh, to the presence of the Lord. Also, we need to be 
uh, speaking his word. Speak the word over yourself. Speak the word over your family. Speak the word over uh, whatever you're doing for the Lord in the kingdom. Speak, speak the word over your workplace. Hallelujah. You know, there's, there's two individuals that are good friends of mine, and both of them work in, in the secular uh, arena. And I have, we have gone to those places and we have salted the land. We have anointed uh, their office space. We have, and I've told them, before you go in that door to your workplace or wherever you're working, speak peace. Bring peace upon that place. You know, and, and Sarah, I tell you this, that you're, you're fixing to go on campus. Uh, you're about to go on campus and that you, you need to know this strategic warfare in order to, to bring down any stronghold that the enemy might try to bring uh, to you while you're there. And speaking peace over your environment, speak peace before you go into the classroom, speak peace. And, uh, and God's peace will come. Hallelujah. And then we need to know about the power of the Holy Ghost. Remember, we, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. And so that power of the Holy Ghost is so important that you build yourself up. You pray, you know, well, you say, well, you know, I pray every once in a while, you know, in tongues. No, that's, that's, that's not that's not what the Lord wants. He wants you to be, Brother Fred's praying in the spirit right now. Hallelujah. We need to be praying in our prayer language all the time, anytime that we can, in the car, in the shower, in the kitchen, in the, in the, uh, when you're uh, visiting uh, with individuals, you know, you can always pray uh, in, in, in your prayer language. And so if there's no, no restriction there, and the more you pray, the more power builds up on the inside of you until you become like a, a, a stick of dynamite. Hallelujah. Dynamite. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, I'm going to bring this to some kind of conclusion by talking about the name of Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just cry out Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Whatever the stronghold is, all you have to do is cry out the name of Jesus. Let's go to Acts chapter 3. There's a man that was paralyzed from birth. I believe this was a stronghold that was a very strong demonic stronghold and it says there was a certain man i'm in verse two but if you'll notice in verse one peter and john were going somewhere they were going to prayer hallelujah it was something that they did on a regular basis not just every six months or every time they they went to a service but they prayed without ceasing hallelujah and they prayed on a regular basis Thank you, Lord. So they were going up to prayer. And it says a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, he had never walked, never, was carried every day to the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask or beg for alms of them that entered into the temple. And But Peter and John show up. Now, Peter and John are full of the love of God. They're full of the power of God. They knew who they were in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so when they saw him, they said, look upon us. 
you know, fasten your eyes upon us, look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something from them, some, some alms, some money, something like that. And then uh, Peter said, Whoo, silver and gold, have I none? What does he mean by that? He meant that this stronghold cannot be broken by spending a lot of money. Woo! Hallelujah. It's not about money, people. It's about how much of God do you have in you? And Peter and John had a lot of the Lord in them. And they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to give it to you tonight. Hallelujah. What I have, I'm going to give unto you. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. The Lord is doing this session tonight. Isn't he doing it? Yes, he is. It's a miracle. This is a miracle tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I thank the Lord for it. It says, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And it said that the man, and then, then Peter had to help him and he took his hand and it says he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, As a earth rise up and walk. That's what happened. The name of Jesus was activated. Peter and John said in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Peter, not in the name of Freddie, not in the name of Joy, not in the name of Ruth, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. So in the name of Jesus, I call every stronghold that has held you back that has hindered you even from childhood, those, those things that were said to you uh, in, in your childhood days that, that still try to come and, and haunt you and, and hinder you from your purpose and your destiny. Right now, I say be gone in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For you are who you are by the grace of God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for joy. I thank you for George. I thank you for Sarah. I thank you for Grace. I thank you for Ruth. I thank you for Gwen. I thank you for Lucy. I thank you, Lord, for every one of these. Uh, they love you, Lord. They are your children, Lord. They are your disciples, Lord. And I give them to you. And I thank you, Lord, that every stronghold in their life any sickness in their body, any uh, uh, anxiety in their life, any fear in their life, any condemnation in their life, any uh, lack in, your, in their life, Lord, is gone right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember, work on your prayer life. Whenever the Lord tells you to fast, then fast. Begin to speak the word of God over yourself, over your situation, and then praise the name of Jesus. Pray in your prayer language. <clears throat> Build up that power that's on the inside of you. I want, I want more and more of God's power. I sit in my in, in, in my living room on my on my sofa and I asked the Lord one day, I said, all three of my children were sick. We had a lot of medical bills that needed to be paid. And I said, Lord, is this all there is? Is this all that you have? And he spoke to me. 
And he said, I have more power for you. And that's when I began to search the scriptures to find out that, yes, he had more power for me. And, and I haven't arrived at my destination yet. So I still need more and more power, more and more power. Every day you need more power. Every day you need the wisdom of the Lord, which comes out of his power. The more power you have, the more those, those um, strongholds in your life will be broken. Hallelujah. I love that. I see, I see the chains falling off right now. In your lives, I see any chains just fall in Jesus' name. Break, break, hallelujah, break those chains, Lord. You've said that in your name, you will break those chains, break those chains of any sickness, any migraine headaches, any um, uh, digestive problems, any, any uh, difficulties with their families, uh, in their marriages, uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, break those chains off of their lives. Off of their lives, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.